Access your free language gifts right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the writing a journal cheat sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll be able to keep a diary in your target language and talk about your day. Inside, you learn phrases for common daily activities from morning to night. Second, the language learning starter pack PDF ebook. If you're new to the language, do you know what word to learn first? With this ebook, you get over 70 basic words and phrases that beginners need to know. Diego, necesitas ayudarme. ¿Qué pasó? Es que mi celular está en chino. Eh, ¿Te refieres a que está difícil de entenderle? No, Diego, está en chino, mira. O sea, li ah, sí, literal, está en chino. Uh -huh. Ok. Ah, mira, Efra, es muy sencillo. Te voy a ayudar a ponerlo en español. Ok. Lo primero que tienes que hacer es desbloquearlo. Uh -huh. Ok. Una vez que lo desbloquees, uh -huh. te vas a la pantalla de ajustes. Bien. Ya aquí en la pantalla de ajustes, te vas a donde dice idioma. Que no sé cómo se dice en chino, pero pues aquí hay un icono de idioma. Entonces uh -huh. vamos a darle ahí. Y. O oh, en el icono. Exacto, ahí en el icono. Y ya después seleccionas la opción de español, que aquí dice español. Ok. Y listo, ya está en español. Voy a llamar a mi mamá. Sí. Espera, espera, espera. Uh, creo que no hay recepción aquí. Uh, no, no, Efra, no, no es que no haya recepción. Lo que pasa es que tú pusiste tu celular en modo avión y cuando pones el celular en modo avión, pues evidentemente no hay red, no puedes marcar. ¿Me estás hablando en chino, eh, Diego? Ay, Efra. Mira, yo sé que es difícil entender a los teléfonos inteligentes, pero... Te voy a ayudar. Hey, what's up, my beautiful, beautiful friends of SpanishPole101.com, as you might know, my name is Diego. And I'm Efraín. And although we are not experts in smartphones, we can definitely teach you very useful vocabulary for this. And okay. if you're interested, guys, enjoy this video. Woo! Okay guys, so today, as you might imagine, we're going to talk about vocabulary for smartphones, useful mm -hmm. vocabulary. We also mentioned a phrase before that was, está en chino. So oh. you might be wondering, what is that? Mm -hmm. So it is not literal, like it is in Chinese, but rather we say this in Spanish to convey the idea that something is difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. So we say, ah, oh, es que eso está en chino, Efra. Sí, um, estudiar... Álgebra está en chino. Sí, claro. Sí, It's sí, confusing. sí. Estudiar chino está en chino, ¿no? También. Sí. I don't know if Chinese people would say something like, oh, está en español. Or <laughs> está en español. Está en español. Pero or nosotros, like ajá, tenemos esa expresión. Exacto. O también tenemos la expresión está en griego. Ah, oh, sí. Casarse está en griego. No, well, okay. O sea, está complicado. Yeah, está complicado. Es difícil. Ok, I, I don't use that one, but yeah, that, that's, that's true. <laughs> I, I, personally, I prefer chino. Personally, chino. I would prefer chino, but... <laughs> ok, chicos, pues vamos a comenzar con esta lista porque en verdad tenemos mucho vocabulario, entonces espero que tengan su pluma y su cuaderno para anotar estas palabras and let's get started. Sí, vamos para allá. Bien. <laughs> <risa> ok, bien, la primera de ellas es GPS, GPS, que es lo mismo que GPS, wow. Ajá. sí, <risa> gran descubrimiento, órale, muy bien, <risa> bien, la segunda es tarjeta SIM, tarjeta SIM, o tarjeta, ajá, tarjeta SIM, de SIM card, SIM card, uh -huh. ya, pero también tenemos tarjeta de memoria, tarjeta de memoria, memory card, ajá, wow. y por último también tenemos, bueno no por último, no por último, eh, también tenemos el teléfono inteligente, uh -huh. el teléfono inteligente, smartphone. Ok chicos, la siguiente palabra es el proveedor o la red, uh -huh. el proveedor o la red es quien te da el servicio del teléfono, de provider, ok, ¿Quién te da el, el servicio? Por ejemplo, en México, el más popular es Telcel, por ejemplo. Okay. ¿no? Aunado a este término, también tenemos la recepción. Recepción, y la recepción es, si tienes buena recepción, entonces puedes hacer llamadas y la otra persona te puede escuchar bien, ¿no? Ok. Uh -huh. La recepción. Uh -huh. 
Ok chicos, la siguiente que tenemos es un número de teléfono, uh -huh. por supuesto, el número de teléfono y también tenemos esto que es, ese es el flash o también se puede decir en español el destello, ok, uh -huh. y por otro lado también tenemos eh, la palabra ajustes que la usamos en el skit, los ajustes, Ajá. de settings, ¿no? Ajá. Y bueno, también tenemos el icono. El icono. Como las aplicaciones tienen un icono. Sí, ¿no? las aplicaciones tienen un icono. Un icono. Uh -huh. Ahora, chicos, cuando tienes un celular que está bloqueado, uh -huh. ¿ok? A eso se le llama que tiene una pantalla de bloqueo. Ah, muy bien. Tu pantalla de bloqueo. Cuando tú desbloqueas tu unlock, cuando tú desbloqueas el teléfono, entonces entras a la pantalla de inicio, ¿ok? Uh -huh. La pantalla de inicio, ¿ok? De home screen, basically. Oh, muy bien. Sí. Uh -huh. Ahora, es muy importante que un teléfono inteligente tenga una buena duración de la batería. Ah, vale. Duración de la batería, de uh -huh. battery life. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Bien, por otra parte, muchos teléfonos tienen un asistente digital. Un asistente digital. Como Siri. Como Siri. Uh -huh. Ajá, un asistente digital. Por otra parte, nosotros también tenemos el brillo. El brillo. Uh -huh. Exacto. Si estás, por ejemplo, viendo tu celular en la noche, uh -huh. es conveniente tener el brillo bajo para no dañar tus ojos. Uh -huh. Si por otro lado estás en el sol, entonces tienes que subir el brillo casi a tope, casi uh -huh. todo el brillo, eh, para poder ver la pantalla, ¿no? Ajá, claro. Bien, por otra parte, algunas veces a los dispositivos también les llamamos aparatos. Aparatos o dispositivos. Uh -huh. Aparatos o dispositivos. Exactamente. Uh -huh. Perfecto. Ok, chicos, la siguiente palabra muy útil es que quizás ya no se utiliza mucho como anteriormente, pero es importante, son los mensajes. Oh. Exactamente, los mensajes. Sí. Uh -huh. ¿Tú todavía envías mensajes, Efra? Ya no. ¿No? ¿No? Yo sí, pero solo por WhatsApp. Ah, bueno, pero. <risa> son mensajes, ¿no? Pero, evidentemente, cuando sales de casa y no puedes tener Wi-Fi, porque claro, pasa que estás en la calle y necesitas conectarte a internet, uh -huh. entonces tú usas los datos, which is the data, Perfecto. mobile data, los datos. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Bien, por otra parte, también tenemos la pantalla táctil, uh -huh. la pantalla táctil, the touch screen. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Y por último, cuando hablamos y no queremos tener el celular cerca, necesitamos el altavoz, uh -huh. el altavoz. Exacto. Speakers. Los speakers, es el speakers. altavoz. Ajá, el altavoz, uh -huh. o los altavoces, pero bueno, eh, puedo decir, hey, pon tu celular en altavoz. Exactamente, como lo usamos en singular, ¿no? Uh -huh. Pon tu celular en altavoz. Exacto. Ok, guys, now let's see some vocabulary for accessories. Uh -huh. Ok, so the first one is carcasa. 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 Uh -huh. Case. Bien. Número dos, cámara delantera. Cámara delantera, front camera, y cámara trasera, uh -huh. cámara trasera, rear camera. Ajá, muy bien, también tenemos protector de pantalla, protector de pantalla, y por otro lado, algo muy importante, el cargador, el cargador. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Muy bien. Y bien, también tenemos los audífonos o auriculares audífonos o auriculares. Exacto. <laughs> okay, that's too much information. Let's yeah. take a break now and let's see some examples of what you have seen so far. Uh -huh. Check if you can understand and recognize the words that we have told you. Sí. Okay. Muy bien. Ejemplo uno. Me gusta cómo luce el icono de Instagram. Me gusta cómo luce el icono de Instagram. Sí, está chulo. Mm -hmm. ¿Sí? sí, sí, sí. Okay. Número dos. Mi cámara trasera es de 10 megapíxeles. Mi cámara trasera es de 10 megapíxeles. Muy poco, ¿no? Tengo buenas fotos. 
Bueno, está bien. Tercer ejemplo. Tengo a mi perrito en mi pantalla de inicio. Ay, qué bonito. Ok, guys, so the next category here is acciones con el teléfono. Uh -huh. Acciones que puedes hacer con el teléfono. Perfecto. Número uno, por supuesto, contestar. Contestar una llamada. Ajá. Uh -huh. Número dos, colgar una llamada. Uh -huh. Colgar una llamada. Bien. Número tres, en los smartphones puedes descargar, descargar una aplicación. To download. Uh -huh. Ok. Descargar. Perfecto. Eh, siguiente. Puedes tomar una captura de pantalla. Uh -huh. Puedes tomar una captura de pantalla. Muy bien. Y también cuando tomas una foto, puedes guardar esa foto o almacenar esa foto. Ah, muy bien. Uh -huh. Ajá. Pero también podemos desbloquear el celular. Desbloquear el celular. O podemos bloquear bloquear el celular. Uh -huh. Por otra parte, también podemos llamar o marcar. Llamar o marcar. Uh -huh. ¿Ah? Muy bien. ¿Cómo? Sí, Exacto. muy bien. Y también podemos mandar un mensaje. Mandar un mensaje. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. También en la actualidad podemos subir algo a la nube. Ah, muy bien. Subir algo a la nube. O también podemos subir una foto. Ya, también subir una foto y en redes sociales podemos publicar algo, Ajá. publicar algo, publicar una foto, publicar un video, publicar un meme, <ríe> claro, okay. tu actividad favorita. Sí. <ríe> That's it for today, my beautiful friends of SpanishPod101.com, please click and destroy that like button. Uh -huh. eh, escriban sus comentarios allá abajo y por favor compartan este video con otros estudiantes. Exactamente. Subscribe to this channel and don't forget to get your free lifetime account at SpanishPod101.com or where you can get this vocabulary for mobile phones, exactly. smartphones, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a lot more topics. Ajá, uh -huh. ya, yeah, of course. So, nos vemos en el siguiente. Hasta luego. Oye, ¿cómo te llamas? Ah, pues mira, mi nombre es Juan Daniel Ignacio de la Rosa Álvarez. Ah, ¿Y tú? Yo soy solo Mario Alberto Gómez Yáñez. Ah, pues me gusta más mi nombre. Sí, a mí también. <risa> ok, guys, so in today's video we're going to check what is the structure of Mexican names We're going to check some of the most popular Mexican names mm -hmm. and also some of the most popular last names. So if you are interested, guys, enjoy this video. Woo! Okay, guys, so although this might seem to you a boring topic, I can assure that it's not at all. Actually, it is quite interesting, culturally speaking, because yeah. in Mexico, for example, one shocking fact is that we actually normally have two up to three names followed by our two last names our dad's name and our mom's last name mm -hmm. so guys uh, let's learn together some of the most popular names and also some of the popular last names so before we dive into the most common names in mexico let's just start with the structure mm -hmm. and well it's pretty common in mexico to have two names dos nombres por ejemplo Juan Carlos Juan Carlos usualmente estos dos nombres tienen armonía en el sonido armonía en el sonido Juan Carlos claro porque ¿qué pasa si cambiamos el orden? ¿qué pasa si cambiamos el orden y ahora es Carlos Juan Carlos Juan Suena un poco pausado, no hay mucha armonía. Juan Carlos, vamos a ver otro ejemplo. Think of a Mexican mama who will tell you, hey, Juan Carlos, come here, it sounds good. Ajá. But, hey, Carlos Juan, come Carlos here. Carlos like, Juan. Carlos Ajá. Juan, like, no. Ajá. Really. It sounds But rude. Juan eh? Carlos, yeah. Mm -hmm. It has harmony, right? Ajá. Juan Carlos. Otro ejemplo, José Luis. José Luis. 
Es muy diferente a Luis José. Luis José no suena tan... No. Hey, Luis armonía. José, ven para acá. No. Hey, José Luis. Exacto. Otro nombre. María José. María José. Para una chica. María José. Uh -huh. But if you're in Berlin and you say José María, it's rather for a man. And that <laughs> also works. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy, like María José is like for a woman, but mm -hmm. José María could work for a man. Sí, exacto. Mm -hmm. Pero, solo keep this in mind, recuerden esto, mantengan esto, que siempre debe de haber una armonía entre los dos nombres. O tres. O tres nombres, hasta tres nombres. También es común en México, eh, no tanto como dos nombres, pero hay personas que tienen tres nombres. Pero al mismo tiempo, todos deben de tener una armonía. Así es, pues mira, yo personalmente tenía un amigo que tenía tres nombres. ¿Tres? Ya. Yeah. Su nombre era José Leonardo Daniel. José Leonardo Daniel. Oh, mira. Yo lo llamaba gordo al final. O sea, no, no lo llamaba ni José, ni Leonardo, ni Daniel. Solo le decía gordo, pero era es un nickname, es un apodo de cariño. Gordo, okay. ven acá. Okay. Ya es cariño. Mm. Don't call anyone gordo. It's offensive. <laughs> Unless he's your friend. Clo close friend. Okay, guys. So, now, what about the last names? Como mencionamos anteriormente, en México es común tener dos apellidos. Usar los dos apellidos. Oh. Sí. Pero, ¿de dónde vienen estos apellidos? Mm. ¿Acaso también deben de tener armonía? No. En el caso de los apellidos, nosotros no los escogemos, sino que estos son dados de los padres. Uh -huh. Así es. El primer apellido es siempre el primer apellido paterno. Bueno, nowadays it is changing. Now you can choose the, the, your mom's last name. But normally, in almost all cases, el primer apellido es el apellido paterno. Tu segundo apellido es el primer apellido de tu madre. So, in other words, si mis apellidos son Martínez Fuentes, quiere decir que mi padre, sus apellidos son Martínez something, Martínez Ramírez. Hay Luz Ramírez. Yeah, Ramírez is lost and I keep Martínez. Because his last names are Martínez Ramírez. I adopt the first one. And my first last name is Martinez. And if my second last name is Fuentes, uh -huh. uh, then it means that my mother, my mother's last name is Fuentes, for example, Fuentes Rodriguez, for example. Fuentes Rodriguez. Then I lose Rodriguez. And I keep Fuentes as my second last name. Exacto. It means that eventually, when I have kids, Fuentes is going to be lost. Mm. And I keep Martinez. Martínez Fuentes, Exacto. el apellido paterno. Siempre se mantiene uh -huh. el apellido paterno. Okay. Paterno. Paterno. Uh -huh. Yeah, I said paterno. And I said... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Now, let's consider this scenario. My two last names are Méndez and Rosales. Méndez and Rosales. And let's suppose that I have a son with a girl whose name is... Uh, Karina and her two last names are Martinez and Rodriguez, for example. Mm -hmm. Then it means that my son is going to adopt my first last name and the first last name of my wife. Uh -huh. Okay? So remember, a name is composed by the first uh, father's last name and the first mother's last name. Therefore, my son could be Hercules Méndez. Uh, Martínez. Hércules. Ya. Yeah. Hércules y su apellido paterno. Méndez. Méndez. Y a su apellido materno. Martínez. Martínez. Yeah. Wow. Sounds cool. Hércules Méndez cool. Martínez. Bien. Sounds, it sounds strong. Yeah. Does it sound? Yeah. Like Hércules by itself. Like, like, sí. <laughs> like Hércules by itself. Hércules por sí mismo suena strong. Suena fuerte. Suena fuerte. Ah, suena strong. Suena strong. <laughs> so there you have the structure. Remember the um, you, you have to choose your names. Normally in Mexico, 
two names up to three names and the last names uh, who are given by your father and your mother. Exacto. Okay guys, so now let's continue with the most popular names for women in Mexico. As for this video, we're recording this on 2021 and now these are the most popular names. So let's get started with this list. El primero de ellos, María Guadalupe, Sofía, María Elena, Verónica, Paulina. Wow. Mm -hmm. Vamos a continuar con Paola, Jimena, Valeria, María Fernanda y Camila. Ah, oh, muy bien. También tenemos Montserrat, Andrea, Rosa, Valentina, Isabela, Alejandra. Wow, muy bien. Mm -hmm. Por último, tenemos Ana María, Regina, Stephanie, Adriana, Natalia. Ok, guys, so now let's start with the list of names that are popular among men in Mexico. Ajá. Y bueno, comencemos esta lista con José Luis, Juan, José, Francisco, Manuel y Carlos. Let's continue. Roberto, Fernando, Daniel. Ángel, Ricardo, Jorge. Mm, interesante. Entonces, sigamos esta lista con Javier, Raúl, Enrique, Gabriel, uh -huh. eh, Pablo, Diego, también tenemos tu nombre. ¡Oh, wow! <risa> y vamos a terminar esta lista con Carlos, Santiago, Sebastián, Emiliano, Juan Pablo y Rodrigo. Ahora vamos a continuar con una pequeña lista de los apellidos más comunes en México. Iniciamos esta lista con Hernández, García, Martínez, López, González, Pérez, Rodríguez, Sánchez. Oh, muy bien. Pero también tenemos Flores, Cruz y Gómez. Mm, mm -hmm. Exactly. So what this means is that if you choose any of the names that we said before plus two of these last names, there's for sure one in Mexico whose name is like that. For example, <laughs> Juan Pablo Martinez Perez. I'm sure there is one Juan Pablo Martinez Perez in Mexico. I'm yeah. pretty sure about uh -huh. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Muy bien. Mine is not that common in Mexico. No, Piña is not that Piña. common. Piña. Yo me apellido Piña. Like pineapple. Pineapple. Yeah, funny but true. <laughs> yeah. Fun fact. Fun fact. Piña. Unnecessary, but fun fact. Fun fact. Efraín Piña. Eso es todo por hoy, mis amigos de SpanishPod101.com. Don't forget to write your comments down there, to click on the notification, subscribe to this channel, share this video with other learners, of course, and, well, in our site you could get free PDF cheat sheets with tons and tons of vocabulary. So get it now. It is for free. Exactly. Y es todo. Hasta luego. Ay, oiga, este libro está muy bonito. Eh, ¿Cuánto cuesta? Mm, 300. Híjole, este... ¿Ya cuánto es lo menos? Uh, ya es lo menos, joven. No puedo bajarle más. Es que el precio es un poco alto. Ay, ándele, bájele un poquito. 290. Ah, todavía es muy caro. Bueno, muchas gracias. A ver, espere, espere. ¿Cuánto trae? Pues mire, honestamente tengo 250. ¿Me lo deja en 250? Órale, ya para que te lo lleves. Ah, muchas gracias, señor. Hello there, my beautiful, beautiful friends of SpanishPod101.com, as you might know, my name is Diego. And I'm Efraín. And in today's video, we're going to check a very interesting topic if you come to Mexico and you want to buy something, mm -hmm. but you want to have that item at a lower price. Yes, that's right. We're going to learn how to bargain in Mexico. Okay. If this is a, an interesting topic for you guys, enjoy this video. Woo! Okay guys, so you arrive to Mexico, then you see an item that you like, you go to a market and you can speak directly with the artisan or with the seller. Uh, you'd really want that item, but you'll find that that might be slightly expensive. Mm -hmm. Or even, might, maybe you want to save some bucks. 
So what can you do? Well, fortunately for you in this video, we're going to tell you how to bargain properly in Mexico. And don't worry, this is a common practice. So uh, don't feel bad if you, if you do it because we do it almost all the time. So uh, let's get started. Disclaimer. Okay, guys. So you can only do this when you are buying directly from an artisan or when you are in a market. Okay, so don't do it in a supermarket, for example, no. or with uh, prices fixed and it is marked, actually. Uh, so don't do it there. Yeah, or in a flea market. Yeah, or no, in the market. That's tianguis, great. tianguis. No, tianguis. Okay, guys, so to help you familiarize with this topic, we are going to start with a um, brief list of vocabulary. See? Mind you, this is not a vocabulary video, so we're just going to give you a couple of words. So when we do or when we say uh, the phrases that we commonly use, you are more familiar. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let's get started with some nouns. Sí, claro. El artículo. El artículo. Mm -hmm. El cambio. El cambio. Mm -hmm. En México también le decimos morralla mm -hmm. o feria. Exacto. Morralla mm -hmm. o feria. Uh -huh. También tenemos el producto, uh -huh. es un sinónimo de artículo, el producto, y por supuesto, el precio. Exacto. El precio. Bien. Dos palabras, el descuento o la rebaja. El descuento o la rebaja. Uh -huh. Muy bien. Otras dos palabras, la oferta, la oferta o la promoción. La promoción. Okay, guys, now let's proceed with some adjectives. Mm -hmm. And the first one that we have is caro. Bien. Caro. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we have barato. 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 Sí, claro. Bueno, también tenemos usado. Usado. Mm -hmm. Por otra parte, económico. Económico. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exacto, which is a synonym actually of uh, barato. Barato. Económico Exacto. o barato. Ok, guys, so now let's check some phrases, useful uh -huh. phrases for this. And the first one is obviously, ¿cuánto cuesta? Ajá. Uh -huh. ¿Cuánto cuesta? Bien. And you want a discount. Mm -hmm. Es lo menos. Es lo menos. Mm -hmm. Which is like it's the lowest price. Mm -hmm. Es lo menos. Or even you can say, Um, y no hay una rebaja y no hay una rebaja uh -huh. claro la siguiente ándele no sea malito ándele no sea malito exacto muy bien uh -huh. another one hágame un descuento ándele uh -huh. hágame un descuento ándele exacto exacto pero también puedes decir si, si me llevo dos ¿En cuánto me los deja? Si me llevo dos, ¿en cuánto me los deja? ¿En cuánto? Bien, ahora algunos consejos para regatear en México. Algunos consejos para regatear en México. Bien. Número uno, amenaza con irte, uh -huh. pero vete muy lentamente. Ay, no, ¿sabe qué? Es que es muy caro, pero muchas gracias. Bueno, a ver, ven aquí, te doy una rebaja. Perfecto. <laughs> yeah, so no one likes. No one likes to uh, lose a sale. Mm -hmm. So that's why it is very important that you, when you leave, do it slowly. <laughs> Busca el mejor precio. Busca el mejor precio. Quizá lo que tú quieres está en otro negocio. Entonces, compara los precios del mismo producto. Exacto. Uh -huh. Por ejemplo, un bolso en un lugar puede costar 300 y un bolso muy similar puede costar 200. Entonces, si te gustó más un bolso el primero, podrías intentar negociar entre los 300 pesos y los 200 pesos del uh -huh. otro bolso. Otro tip, siempre ten el dinero justo y en la mano, uh -huh. listo para 
darlo al vendedor. Sí. Ese debe de ser tu precio máximo. Por ejemplo, bueno, pues está en 300. Mire, aquí tengo 250. ¿Cómo ve? 300. Aquí están 250, ya están, mire, aquí están. Bueno, ¿sí? Toma, gracias. Ajá. Sí, always have like the exact amount of your ideal price. Yeah, don't have more than what you are willing to pay for. No, no, no. Buena idea. El último, provoca una sonrisa en el vendedor. Provoca una sonrisa en el vendedor. Yeah, to generate empathy. Exacto. Pero usted es muy guapo. Ay, oiga, eh. tengo esposa, oiga. Ma, eh, ya un descuento. Sí, güey, bueno, está bien. Ya, lléveselo, démelo, 50 pesos. Oh, bueno. Y su número. <risa> That's it for today. Muchas gracias a todos. Suscríbete a este canal. Da click en las notificaciones. Click on the notifications. Danos tu pulgar arriba pero también escribe tus comentarios allá abajo. Eh, share this video with other learners and see you in our next video. Ah, don't forget to get your free, free lifetime account at SpanishFood101.com where you will get tons and tons of free PDF cheat sheets to increase your vocabulary set for free. Yeah, that's it. Adios. Hello there, my beautiful, beautiful friends of SpanishBowl101.com, as you might know, my name is Diego. And I'm Efraín. And in today's video, we have a very special topic, and that's, have you ever wondered why you should even love Mexicans? Mm -hmm. Well, probably you haven't. Of course, it's not something that you wake up thinking about, but why, uh, <laughs> why should I love Mexicans? <laughs> It's not like a common topic, yeah, but if you're interested in today's video, we're going to give you some reasons. So, if you are interested, guys, hey, just video. Woo! Okay, guys, so perhaps you haven't even thought about why you should love Mexicans, mm -hmm. but we have found several reasons and we want to share something about our culture with you. So that's why right now you're going to hear many reasons why you should love Mexicans. Uh -huh. So hopefully guys you will fall in love as much as we uh, are with our culture. Let's get started. Let's go. Okay, la primera razón. La hospitalidad de los mexicanos. La hospitalidad de los mexicanos. Yeah, that's very true. Actually many of my students Whenever they come here to Mexico, the first thing that they notice is that we are very welcoming. See? So, yeah, we even have a very famous phrase that we say among each other. And we say, hey, mi casa es tu casa. Uh -huh. My house is your house. Sí. Mi casa es tu casa. Entonces, cuando alguien dice, tu casa está en el centro de la ciudad, mm -hmm. and he's not talking about your house. He's talking about his or her house and... He's offering that house to you. Exactly. Because it is now your house. Es tu casa. Sí, por ejemplo, su casa está en la ciudad. De México. Cerca del ciudad, aeropuerto. En la ciudad de México, cerca del aeropuerto. Ahí tienen su casa. Uh, when, you, when you hear that, you have to say thanks. Gracias. 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 Okay, guys. So, the second reason is because of the gastronomy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, come on, guys. The gastronomy, the Mexican gastronomy is widely known. So, I'm pretty sure that at least you know one dish of, of the Mexican cuisine. Mm -hmm. So, probably you have heard about tacos al pastor. Mm -hmm. Probably you have heard about pozole. Yeah. Or even quesadillas. It doesn't matter uh, if you like spicy things or not. Because not all our food is spicy. But you can include sauce. Salsa on almost everything, almost everything. And limón. And limón, of course, we put it to everything limón. That's sí, right. Sí, sí, sí. Mm -hmm. Okay, another reason. La calidez, which can be called as personability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. La calidez. Why? Because, well, let me give you an example. When we arrive to a restaurant, we say to everyone, Provecho, enjoy your meal. Mm -hmm. And when we leave it to everyone, we can say also, provecho, hasta luego. 
Aprovecho. <risa> so every time. Is the same. Every, yeah, it's the same. Enjoy your meal. Aprovecho. Exactly. Pero también, también, con, entre nosotros, nos abrazamos cuando saludamos. Yeah, so it is, it is something very typical that when we see one friend that we haven't seen for, uh, for a long time, it is very typical between us to hug. Mm -hmm. And even when we know a person for the first time, uh, so in that case, uh, we can even kiss the chick. Mm -hmm. not, not normally between men, but uh, between a man and a woman, it is very normal that even if it's for the first time. So this might be something weird for some foreigners. But yes, this is very typical in Mexico. Mm -hmm. So you can have an idea of how, how much personality sí. we have. And uh, we ask, how are you all the time? Mm -hmm. Sí. Oiga, Chucho, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo bueno, está? And we say all, all the time, buenos días, buenas tardes. Even if it's a strange on the, on the street, it's like, hey, muy buenos días. Hey, buenas tardes, buenas uh -huh. noches. Exacto. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's correct. Okay, guys, another reason is the generosity. Sí. Yes, of course. So, for example, if you are at a party, It wouldn't be strange when someone offers you a beer. Or if you are between friends, it is normal that someone says, hey, that's on me, I invite the pizza, for example. Sí, claro. Yeah, and it's not only about food, it's basically about everything. Like, hey, you don't have for, for the boss? Ah, don't worry, that's on me, mm -hmm. come, come here. That's very typical in Mexico. Yeah. So we are very generous towards people. We even have three ways to say, yo te invito. Mm -hmm. Yo te invito. Yo te invito is a standard way to say, I invite you, I invite you, I pay for this. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Exactly. So the first way to say it is, yo picho, mm -hmm. yo picho las cervezas, yo picho las cervezas. Yeah, or you can say, yo te picho, right? Like, yo te picho mm -hmm. la comida. That's the first one, the pichar. Then we have another one, and that's disparar. With, which is not to... No, it's not mm -hmm. like to fire. No, no, no. Disparar. disparar. Yo te disparo la cerveza, yo te disparo... El pasaje. El, el pasaje. Uh -huh. um, yo disparo la comida. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. And the third way, with the verb discutir. Yeah, you heard correctly. Discutir. Which actually is more like reflexive, so it's like yo me discuto, uh -huh. so yo me discuto la comida, o oye, está bien, yo, yo picho las chelas, pero tú te discutes la pizza. Tú te discutes la pizza. Exactly, so that's the way, like for saying, you pay for this, you pay for the other, so yeah, but normally we're very generous, so don't feel strange if we all the time are inviting you, uh, that's very normal between us. Uh -huh. La siguiente razón, el amor de los mexicanos hacia los extranjeros es innegable. Uh -huh. Siempre lo recibimos con los brazos abiertos. Uh -huh. Con los brazos abiertos. Uh -huh. Very good. Yeah, that's correct. And it doesn't matter. This might be a sensitive or deep topic, but it truly really doesn't matter your race or your age or whether you are wealthy or not. Uh, you will always, always, always feel the, a good treatment from Mexicans. Uh -huh. Claro, exactly. por supuesto. Entonces, siempre que vengas acá, te vamos a recibir, como dice Efra, con los brazos abiertos. Mm -hmm. You will feel it instantly. If you know a Mexican, probably you know one Mexican, you will know what I'm talking about. Okay, guys, so the next one is our humor. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct, our humor, but also how positive we are despite all the difficulties that we might face. Claro. Por supuesto... Uh, Hace, hace un tiempo surgió la idea de, oigan, pero los mexicanos, pero no tienen dinero, ¿por qué son felices? Bueno, en realidad eso no es algo que a nosotros nos afecta, porque nosotros siempre encontramos el lado positivo a todas las cosas. No importa si es una catástrofe, que sí hemos tenido bastantes catástrofes, tratamos de ver lo positivo, nos ayudamos mucho entre nosotros, y después también tenemos una enorme enorme cantidad de memes. Maybe if you haven't found a reason to learn Spanish, just for the memes, totally it is worth it. Yeah. La última razón, last but not the least, la última pero no menos importante, es la cultura. Mm -hmm. The culture by itself, and the traditions. La cultura por sí misma. Claro, todos conocen Día de Muertos. 
pero Día de Muertos es diferente en cada estado. It's very different in each state of Mexico. Mm -hmm. But also, here is the thing. México está conformado también por pueblos indígenas, por comunidades indígenas. So, they have their own culture, each of them. Baile, música, e incluso lenguaje. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Y platillos especiales dependiendo de la, de la ocasión. Sí, sí, sí. So, y también hay manifestaciones, muchas manifestaciones culturales. Una de las más famosas es en Oaxaca, la Guelaguetza, sí. por ejemplo. Where many, uh, many communities get together and yeah, they represent their community with dance or with music. Exactamente. And y I claro, like no it. podemos olvidar que tenemos una de las modernas maravillas del mundo en el sur. Chichen Itza. That's it for today, my beautiful friends of SpanishPod101.com. Please don't forget to subscribe to this beautiful channel. <laughs> Click on the notifications. Ahora sí, danos tu pulgar arriba. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, write your comments down there. Once and again. share this video with other learners. Uh, okay. Don't forget to get your free lifetime account at SpanishPod101.com where you can get Tons and tons of free PDF cheat sheets. And even we upload new ones. Oh, so why not for free? Good. Get them now. Nos vemos. Hasta luego. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. In this lesson, you'll learn conversational phrases to use when apologizing to someone. After watching this video, you'll be able to apologize and say what you're apologizing for. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Siento llegar tarde. No te preocupes. Once more with the English translation. Siento llegar tarde. I'm sorry for being late. No te preocupes. Don't worry about it. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, I'm sorry for reason. The pattern is, Siento. Reason. This Spanish sentence literally translates as, I feel reason. But it means, I'm sorry for reason. For example, I'm sorry for being late. Siento llegar tarde Siento llegar tarde Now, how do you respond that it's okay? No te preocupes. Listen to it again. No te preocupes. No te preocupes. This Spanish sentence literally translates as Do not worry you. But it means don't worry about it. Here are a few more phrases you can use with the same pattern to apologize. Being late. Llegar tarde. Llegar tarde. Being late. Llegar tarde. Lying to you. Haberte mentido. Haberte mentido. Lying to you. Haberte mentido. Hurting your feelings. Haber herido tus sentimientos. Haber herido tus sentimientos. Hurting your feelings. Haber herido tus sentimientos. Canceling. Haber cancelado. Haber cancelado. Canceling. Haber cancelado. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Siento haberte mentido. No te preocupes. I'm sorry for lying to you. Siento haberte mentido. Don't worry about it.
No te preocupes. Siento haber herido tus sentimientos. No te preocupes. I'm sorry for hurting your feelings. Siento haber herido tus sentimientos. Don't worry about it. No te preocupes. Siento haber cancelado. No te preocupes. I'm sorry for canceling. Siento haber cancelado. Don't worry about it. No te preocupes. Now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, I'm sorry for reason? Siento. Reason. And how do you respond to it? No te preocupes. Imagine you want to apologize because you told a lie to someone. Do you remember how to say lying to you? Haberte mentido. Haberte mentido. Say, I'm sorry for lying to you. Siento haberte mentido. Now say you're sorry for lying and respond to it. Siento haberte mentido. No te preocupes. Now imagine you want to apologize because you hurt someone's feelings. Do you remember how to say, hurting your feelings? Haber herido tus sentimientos. Haber herido tus sentimientos. Say, I'm sorry for hurting your feelings. Siento haber herido tus sentimientos. Now say, you're sorry for hurting someone's feelings, and respond to it. Siento haber herido tus sentimientos. No te preocupes. Now, imagine you want to apologize because you canceled. Do you remember how to say, canceling? Haber cancelado. Haber cancelado. Say, I'm sorry for canceling. Siento haber cancelado. Now, say you're sorry for canceling and respond to it. Siento haber cancelado. No te preocupes. In this lesson, you learned new vocabulary and phrases you can use in your everyday life to apologize to someone. You are now able to apologize and forgive someone like a native speaker. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Hey everyone, welcome to The Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the two minute rule to cracking through the hard parts of language learning. If you're learning a language, there is a 100% guarantee that you have a whole list of grammar rules or words that you struggle with. Or maybe it's a whole skill like listening. Either way, you're likely very aware of your specific pain points, or you could say the hard parts of the language. But what if you could crack these hard parts and master them with something called the two minute rule? Today you'll discover how to use the two minute rule, why you'll need to apply this tactic daily to make it work, and much more. But first, if you're looking for new free language resources and downloads, here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the writing a journal cheat sheet. 
With this cheat sheet, you'll be able to keep a diary in your target language and talk about your day. Inside, you learn phrases for common daily activities from morning to night. Second, the Language Learning Starter Pack PDF eBook. If you're new to the language, do you know what words to learn first? With this ebook, you get over 70 basic words and phrases that beginners need to know. Start with these words first. Download it right now. Third, how to talk about holiday gifts. What gift do you want the most this holiday season? With this quick vocab lesson, you'll learn common gift vocabulary like laptop, camera, money, and more. Fourth, do you know how to say November or December in your target language? If not, then this one minute lesson will teach you all the months of the year. Fifth, interested in learning another language? With this bonus, you'll get free access to our other language programs, from Afrikaans to Vietnamese. Check out all 34 languages inside. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. The two minute rule to cracking through the hard parts of language learning. Part one, the two minute rule for breaking through. If you think about the language you're learning, what are the specific points that you're struggling with? Is it conjugating certain verbs or a certain tense? Leave a comment below and tell us what your trouble spots are. It's practically a guarantee that if you're learning a language, you'll run into trouble from time to time. So how do you deal with these pain points? Well, there's something called the two minute rule for creating habits. If you wanna start a new habit and do something new, do it for just two minutes a day. Once those two minutes are up, you can walk away and come back to it tomorrow. You can apply this very same rule toward cracking the hard parts of language learning. But the trick is you have to keep up with it almost daily or do it every time you're learning a language. How? For example, you can spend about two minutes on creating sentences with grammar rules you recently learned. But why just two minutes? If it's hard, you'd think you'd wanna spend more time on it, right? If you can spend more than two minutes, you should. But the fact is, the parts you struggle with, whether grammar or otherwise, are not fun to do and probably not your favorite things to do. So it's unlikely that you'll put in 10 or 30 minutes towards something you struggle with and don't like. But usually that hard part, if you can master it, will take your language to the next level. So the first reason is the two minute rule makes things easier. If you only have to do two minutes, practicing the language isn't so bad. And second, you could put in more time up front, but that's not the best way. Language becomes natural to us over time, not overnight or after a three hour study session, meaning you have to chip away at it daily. You need time to review, to rest, to let your brain sort it out and come back to practice some more. So what do you currently struggle with? Chances are you're going to avoid these pain points because, well, you'd rather do what's fun or easy, passive stuff like watching YouTube. So that's where the two minute rule comes in. Part two, how to apply this learning tactic. To start, all you have to do is put in two minutes a day or per session if you want to do multiple sessions a day. So think about what it is you're struggling with right now. It could be conjugating verbs, it could be a specific grammar point, or it could be the alphabet for now. If you're using a notebook, which we strongly recommend, at the top of the page, write down the one pain point you want to focus on and just put in at least two minutes practicing that specific thing. You can do more if you want, but keep it short for now and walk away before it feels like a struggle. There's no rush to do it all now. Then at your next learning session, do it again first thing. Open up your notebook, write down that same point you want to focus on, practice it, and then move on to the easier things. And bit by bit, you'll start getting used to the grammar point, the pronunciation, or whatever else that you're struggling with. And it'll slowly become natural for you over time. Again, it's not about mastering everything right now, but making it easy to do and putting in the time consistently. The point is not to overwhelm yourself, which can easily happen if you're practicing something you're not good at. The point is to end it before it gets frustrating. And if you keep at it daily, you'll start cracking through the hard parts of your target language. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to reach your goal for the year, the long-term strategy for success. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week.
And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Want to be able to speak in your target language? Ideally, you'd want a teacher or native speaker to practice with. But if you don't have one, or if you're an introvert who's not ready to talk to native speakers, then good news! There are ways to practice speaking and conversations in your target language without having to speak to anyone. How? Keep watching. How to practice conversation, even if you're an introvert. Today, you'll discover 1. How to use your smartphone to practice speaking, 2. How to immerse yourself in native conversations, and three, how to get feedback on your speaking without having to speak to anyone. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. So how can you practice speaking and conversations on your own? First, you can change the language of your voice assistant on your smartphone like Siri on the iPhone or Google Assistant on Android. This is the easiest thing you can do and a good way to practice speaking the phrases you've learned. If the AI can understand you and respond, then you're on the right track. Second, immerse yourself in real conversations with our audio and video lessons. Learning through conversations is the fastest way to learn. And with our special Conversation First lesson format, you learn a quick dialogue in every lesson. All you have to do is listen, follow along with the transcript, and you'll get used to native-level conversations. Plus, you'll get every word and grammar rule translated and explained by our teachers. You get these lessons the moment you sign up. Third, shadow the conversations in the lessons. Meaning, repeat what you hear out loud. And you can practice shadowing easily with the line-by-line -line audio dialogue that breaks down the conversation into individual lines. Just press the speaker icon to hear the audio and repeat the line. Fourth, practice speaking with our pronunciation practice tools. Here, you'll get to practice speaking the lines from the lesson conversation and compare yourself with the native speakers. This is also a good way to improve your pronunciation because you can hear how you and the native speaker sound side by side. Just look for the microphone icon inside the dialogue and click on it to record yourself. And fifth, test your speaking skills and get feedback from teachers. With our hand graded assessments, a premium plus feature. If you're learning with our system, you'll get tested on what you've learned with multiple choice assessments and hand graded assessments. And hand-graded assessments test you on your speaking and writing and are reviewed by teachers afterwards so that you can get feedback from native speakers without actually having to speak to anyone just yet. So if you want to get access to these resources and our learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. Are there ways to make language learning easier? Is it even possible? Six ways to make learning easier than before. In this guide, you'll discover the six ways to make learning easy, why cheating and looking up answers is a good way to actually learn a language, how to learn from native speakers without getting overwhelmed by their fast speaking, and much more. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. So, how can you make learning a language easier? 1. Learn in small chunks of time. We all know that mastering a language takes time, and this fact alone is overwhelming for many learners. But while it can take time, that doesn't mean you need to study for hours a day. In fact, the best way to learn is to just learn in small chunks of like 5, 10, 15, or even 20 minutes, since language learning is a marathon and not a sprint. You'll need to be consistent, and the best way to do so is to do a little bit every day, instead of overwhelming yourself into quitting. 2. Have a roadmap to follow. Another thing that makes language learning hard is there's just too much to do and learn. There's reading, speaking, listening, grammar, vocabulary, a million paths you can go down. But if you had just one pathway to follow, then learning would become a lot easier because there's only one thing to focus on. And with our learning system, that's exactly what you get. 
you get a recommended pathway of lessons and assessments based on your learning level. Just follow the pathway from lesson one to two to three. Our audio and video lessons are just a few minutes long, so you can learn in small chunks of time. And after every few lessons, you'll be tested on the language with our assessments. Three, read along with the dialogues. If you want to learn from native speakers, you'll quickly notice that they speak a little too fast for beginners. You can't hear where one word ends and another word starts. But if you could listen and follow along with a transcript, you'd be able to hear and see the words, pick up every single word, and quickly get used to native conversations. So when you're learning with our lessons, follow along with the lesson notes and the lesson transcript. The lesson notes give you the dialogue of the conversation, plus grammar explanations. And the lesson transcript is just a transcript of everything said in the lesson. Four, get the conversation broken down. Another way to make native conversations easy to understand is to have the conversation broken down line by line so that you can hear each line one at a time as much as you want. And you can do just that with our line by line audio dialogue. This feature breaks down the lesson dialogue into individual lines that you can listen to and includes the text and translation so that you can hear and see it at the same time. Five, have someone else teach you. Learning on your own can also be hard. You'll likely have a lot of questions about grammar rules. You'll feel uncertain about whether you're saying things right and you won't learn the nuances of words and grammar from a dictionary. So, if you aren't learning with a teacher or a native speaker, we'd recommend you get one. And with our audio and video lessons, which are made by real teachers, you can learn directly from our teachers and get words and grammar rules explained and learn at your own pace. And just like how any good teacher would test you, you also automatically get tested on what you learn with our assessments. And you can even get your very own teacher with the Premium Plus plan. Six, use cheat sheets. Learning anything new can be hard at first, and you'll often be frustrated with the fact that whatever you learn now, you'll likely forget later. But the fact is, successful learning is a result of getting used to the language. You might struggle with words or grammar rules now, but you'll get used to them after seeing, hearing, and using them over time. So that's why it's okay to cheat and take another peek at the meanings of the words and grammar rules you learned before. That's how you get used to the language. And that's where our PDF conversation cheat sheets come in. You can use this free resource to glance through and review words, phrases, and grammar rules until they're natural to you. So if you want to get access to these resources and our learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Is it possible to cheat your way into speaking, reading, and writing in your target language? It is. That is, if you have our PDF language cheat sheets. How to practice speaking, reading, and writing with the PDF cheat sheets. And today, you'll discover, one, how you can add more language to your brain without spending time looking up words in a dictionary, and two, how to improve your speaking, reading, and writing with the cheat sheets. But first, if you don't yet have access to these resources and our language learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. What are PDF cheat sheets? Our cheat sheets are a quick way to improve your language skills without having to study for hours or spend time looking up words in a dictionary. With every cheat sheet, you get a basic dialogue and must know words and phrases for common topics like hobbies, weather, talking about your day, and much more. And there are over 30 cheat sheets that you can download for free on our site, if you're a member. But how can you improve your language with the cheat sheet? Let's take a look. One, how to practice speaking. Every cheat sheet comes with a quick practical dialogue that you can use when you chat with native speakers. But you can also practice speaking ahead of time. Just read the dialogues out loud a few times a day and you'll get used to saying these lines. Reading out loud is one tried and tested tactic for improving your speaking skills. And when you get a chance to speak with a native speaker, you'll be able to say these lines naturally. Two, how to practice reading. You can also practice reading by simply reading through the cheat sheet, the key dialogue, and the words and phrases inside. Just download the PDF to your phone or computer and read through whenever you have a few moments. Or you can print out the cheat sheets and read through them as well. 
3. How to practice writing. The easiest way to practice writing is to simply copy out the words on the cheat sheet into a notebook. You can also print out the cheat sheets and write on them directly. And as a bonus, you get to remember all of the words and phrases better. Whichever skill you want to practice, be sure to do it a few times a day every day for the language to really stick. Or just use the cheat sheets to cheat and get the must-know words for a topic you want to talk about. So, if you want to get access to these resources and our learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and ebooks for free. Just click the link in the description.